Hey, as I promised, I'll be showing this Crux recipe for Substance Designer. And let's get started. It's actually pretty easy. And what we have now, it all comes from these nodes here. But for now, let's, let's just delete those, which means we don't need any of that. And we're starting off with this thing. Now, for this node recipe to work, we need our base shapes. And here I have that. Now, let's make a little more space. From this, we do a foot fill. And just to be cleaner, I won't be using everything that I have here. I'm, I'm making a entirely new one. So, we take the foot fill, clean it up a bit. Then we all know the foot fill to gradient and foot fill to random grayscale. And the old trick to clear up those black areas, we just do a distance with our shape at the top and we say only source because we don't want to combine those. We just control and D and do the same for the bottom one. Now we do another distance and at the top we plug the gradients and at the bottom we plug the grayscale. We select only source again and now we have that, which is the base of our crack, crack shape. We do an edge detect. Uh, this here is entirely up to you, but let's say I don't want all that roundness and the edge width will be 1.4. So we have that. We take it up a little bit, we do a blend. You'll get your main height of the bricks, blocks, whatever have you, and you plug those in that blend. Uh, I like it better when my cracks are the main shape, meaning that I'll just do an invert here. And on the blend we do a subtract. So those are our cracks. Shift and left click drag to move that connector. And now if you move the distance here, you get the cracks. And that's the whole recipe actually. If you move that further, like you could do, uh, let's say three or five. Now you will get these cracks but they are not the the best and why they're all the same now if we want to tweak that we only have to go to the foot fill gradient and increase the angle variation because they are all the same right now and when you get it to the maximum here we have our new awesome cracks at least the base for them now we can play around with the distance a little bit more and you'll see that at a certain distance they'll just max out so that's the maximum you can actually get here but if you want to keep them close to the actual block shapes you can do that as well and because those cracks are super weird right now because they are just White. You could do a simple uh, swap blur, and because we won't be going into too much details here, just a cloud tool, get the samples to the max and the intensity to 0.1, maybe. Now we plug that, we get a better cracks shape now, and of course we don't need that to be one. One is super strong. Let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.15, maybe. Yeah, something like that. And I still want a bit more distance, let's say 10, now we have those. We can do another cool thing where we increase the slope blur, we control D to copy it, plug that in, now plug itself in, do an invert grayscale and do a blur 
but keep that value low, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now we don't see anything because that's super strong, but let's say that's uh, 0 0.05, and we plug that in, which is still super strong, let's say 0 0.002, yeah, something like that. And we can increase that, and this way you're just kind of tightening those those cracks so it it starts to look cool but uh, yeah that's the super simple recipe and this is just the base and now that we have the basic notes here we can start playing around with that let's say we want another thought fill and actually we'll just copy that we will simply change the seed do a blend now um, we'll distance that again do the blend and use it like that on the edge detect now of course we can do an overlay which will work a bit weird here but see we have an entirely new crack shape oh yeah of course I'm plugging that and not that okay now see even more cracks now uh, we can do a divide but this usually doesn't yield very great results so a min darken is way better here but those are just a bit more random shapes and you can see if we uh, if we disable that, you can see the difference. So you can just freely play around with that, and even more cracks now. And as some people mentioned, but uh, that's a more well that's a more well known trick, but you can always do a directional warp get that into the input here and uh, I'll just use one of those I have from my main shapes a random grayscale I'll just plug that in the directional warp as the input you can get that to 200 or something and spin that around use that instead and that way each shape will get its own cracks now this kind of uh, goes ag against this way of uh, creating cracks because uniform cracks on all the shapes and when you move them around this way it just becomes entirely random but if that's something that you actually want that's fine or you can just get a switch use the switch like that so let's say that's a user controlled parameter you have cracks and you just name it cracks randomize and like that the user will actually have the control to say whether they want their cracks to be random or not and of course we have to flip that uh, another trick with those we'll get into now and another trick that uh, actually we can use here is if you get a histogram scan you up the contrast to the maximum and you try to get your cracks shapes this isn't entirely perfect but you could potentially use that now you do an invert grade you do a flat fill uh, you do I'm a bit stuck for some reason. After the flat fill, you do a flat fill to random, you do a flat fill to gradient, angle variation to the maximum. Of course, we do the distance trick. So, like that, only source. Now we have all our shapes. And after we do the cracks, we just get that in there. And of course, not that strong you just 
choose a mode you can go for min darken as a really low value we can increase that but now that's entirely up to you we can also do a multiply if we do a multiply of 0.3 you can also copy that actually we don't need the flood field to gradient we need the flood field to random grayscale like that and here you have random color for each of your shapes which you can utilize again to add some randomness and of course we can't really see anything right now but if we do an IRA so now all of our shapes have their own slope they have their own height and that's pretty much it if this has been helpful please like the video and if you have any questions just post them below see ya